Hi there. Let's get on ready with me as we talk about not conforming to this world and loving the things of the world. So Romans 12 verse 2 says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You know what it is to not be conformed to this world? It means to not love this world. You're not allowed to love the things of the world because loving it will cause you to go astray. We can like the things of the world and we can want to enjoy them, but we cannot love them. Remember the last time we spoke about loving God when Jesus said, do you love me? Love is a strong word and true love, loving God is stronger than just saying, I love horror movies, I love salty chips, I love soda, I love chocolate cake. Because you don't really love them, you really enjoy them. But if it is that you put these things above God, then that's where the love comes in. And whenever he says love, oh, he means love. What does love in this world or being conformed to this world looks like? Well, one, you're going to want to be accepted by the world. And so you'll never do the good thing because the world is not doing the good thing. The world art right now is just about being toxic. And hey, as somebody who <laughs> used to love the world and know what it means to be toxic and say oh it's just my sign i'm a virgo so i'm toxic and ain't nobody gonna play with me how about i'm a child of god and i will turn the other cheek because the bible tells us that as much as it is up to us we should live peaceably with all man and if that includes just acting like you didn't hear when somebody accused you or said something rude about you then please do it we're not going to find pleasure in being accepted as the one who always stands 10 toes down and we will never be ran over. Looking like the world makes you look less like God. Looking like the world make you look less like Jesus. Jesus himself said in John 13, 35, he said, By this, all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. He put us in this realm, so it's, it's kind of confusing to say, God, when you save me, why you never just take me to this world? <laughs> why you never just take me out? He says we're not yet ready because we don't yet understand the brotherly love that we should have for one another here on earth, which we will execute in heaven. We'll be praising him forever in heaven, but we'll be doing it together. And so he's like, you don't yet have the togetherness, so I have to leave you here. It is for your advantage that I leave you here. He's like, I'm not taking you up, but I'm going to tell you how to live while you remain here. Yes, I'm going to look black or I'm going to look white. I'm going to have piercings or I'm going to have tattoos or I'm going to wear the same brand as long as I know for certain it does not go out of my morals and my spiritual um, guidelines. But when it comes to the things that you do, the things that you say, and most importantly, how you treat others, that we must love as God loved us. And so once we can love as God loved us, then everything else will be covered. And then he says, all right then, think it, since you think it's not serious, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? <laughs> Hold on now. Are you telling me? That even though everybody else is hyping me up, I'm out here making enemies with God? Hold on. Me and God and a friend, even though I'm saved, baptized, Holy Ghost filled? <laughs> Enemy with the big man. And we think it's like almost impossible for a Christian who clearly recognizes Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior who has been saved by faith and bought by grace to be an enemy with God. But, but he says, yes, because this is what you will look like. We will encourage the wrong conversations, right? We will give in to lustful desires because we feed the flesh. We don't continue to try to hear the word. We don't seek motivation from the word and from others who are pouring out the word into us. We don't try to read the word. And if we can't read the word, we don't try to put on a sermon or a Bible reading on YouTube, engage with, with media, with a song's book, um, any influence and stuff like that, which just promotes sexual immorality, which promotes...
toxicity <laughs> we hang out with the wrong people the people who try to encourage us and try to mold us into being like them instead of those who will motivate us because who i can't bother to hang with you you're just always about that jesus stuff you're just always on that jesus timing okay you're a christian so what kind of timing you want to be on we do these things because the media and this kind of convo is more interesting than the bible talk we may even start slacking off at work because, hey, I'm not giving my best for this man or woman or for this company. But the Bible tells us that we should work as if we were working for Jesus. We should engage with people as if we were engaging with Jesus because it tells us that we entertain angels without even knowing. And so pray the prayer each morning that before you go into work, Lord, let me do this job as if I was doing it on your behalf. And you'll see how much more, even though the struggles don't change, just how much more strength you have to deal with said struggle and the biggest thing <laughs> we start calling our sins oh mistakes a little mistake i made a little a little mistake you know we start calling them mistakes and then we are okay with them because after all everybody makes mistakes Duh. And because we call them mere mistakes, we don't go ahead and seek forgiveness for them. And without doing that, what we do is we dig ourselves deeper. We dig that ditch of sin deeper. We keep committing more mistakes. We keep committing more sins. And then we become so hard and tough, you know, on the outside that these things no longer phase us. The Holy Spirit no longer is able to be our conscience to make us feel as a guilty there that we go and pour out ourselves and seek the Lord for, you know, redemption. We don't go and repent. And you might be thinking, but okay, I'm saved now. So why is it that I am even tempted to sin? Why is it that I'm even tempted to be conformed to this world? Well, Paul puts it this way. He puts it perfectly. Paul, <laughs> who wrote so many books in the Bible, Paul himself lamented. He said, the things that I don't want to do are the things that I do. And the things that I do want to do, I don't do them. Because his flesh was always at war with his spirit. And that's the same thing for us. We are flesh and this flesh here, it's so strong, but it's so bad. He said, I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. So he acknowledges that in the mind, you know, deep down in the soul, he serves the Lord. Praise be to the Lord. But his flesh is still committing sin. But he knows that where it matters most, he's serving the Lord. And remember, in Romans 12, it tells you that you should not be conformed. Um, but by the renewing of your mind, <laughs> that you may... <laughs> Paul said, hey, my mind serves God, right? And so when I falter... My mind is still serving God and I'm still able to pull it back, to reel it back because my mind knows that this is wrong, that my flesh is doing. And my mind is trying so hard to control this flesh. And Jesus tells you himself, don't be conformed, but by the renewing of that same mind, you'll be able to do what is that good, acceptable and perfect will of God. So once you get your mind in check, then your flesh will start to follow. Therefore, submit to God. You hear me? Therefore, submit to God. Yes, you submitted your soul to God and you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. But no, you have to give everything to him on a daily, minute by minute, you have to submit to him. And then you also have to resist the devil. So he's not also just going to leave you alone because you have God with you. He's going to leave you alone when you use the God that you have with you. When you use the authority that you've been given to resist him. He's like, all right, all right, I heard you. Oh my God, stop rebuking me. That will be his vibe. So I encourage you as Christians and I encourage myself because this word, it just came to me over and over and over and over and over again. I was like, God, I think I'm gonna share this. So he gave me the points and he gave me different scriptures. So you know, put meat on the bone. Don't be conformed, don't let them fold you and mold you into what they want it to look like simply because that's what the way the world is riding right now. Ride the wave of Jesus.